Good, how are you? Good, good. Just, just wondering, you guys have such a big improvement from the 2016-17 season, 2017-18 season. How, how do you make that jump to get back to where you were in 2015-16? Yeah, good point. I, th I think the biggest jump was because we were healthy. And uh, don't get me wrong, we felt like we left a few out last year even. But um, I think the fact that we've got a good, mature group of, uh, I guess, fourth-year players, some juniors, some seniors, uh, and then a, a youthful group that's coming in that we feel can have an instant impact. Uh, I mentioned earlier, I think this is our deepest team we've had. Uh, it's obviously the biggest team on the interior, um, and and we're led by you know some some pretty pretty incredible players. Uh, the two that we have in the back just uh, just to start. So we feel like we've got a great combination: maturity, youth, depth, strength, um, and then we've got to learn from some of the the issues that maybe cost us some of those close games a year ago uh, in order to flip it and make more progress again this season. Uh, how will you lean on those two's leadership this year going into their fourth season? Uh, I think both of them are much more uh, equipped to handle uh, when we get after them. You know, when they're not, it's never a question of, of effort with those two, but being vocal, leading the way. Um, they're good kids, so sometimes they, they're afraid of you know, maybe offending a, a, a teammate by getting after them. But now those two are very hungry, um, and they're not the only two. And, and so I think if you talk to them, uh, they're going to explain that uh, they, they no longer want to be competitive. Last year was a nice competitive year. Well, sh shoot, we're tired of that. We, we, we want to win. We want to get back to the postseason. We've got the guys to do it. Now Now it's uh, we got we have a big saying, talk is cheap, so we don't talk about it. We just got to get on the court and get it done. You talk about this being maybe your deepest rush you've had since being at Oregon State. Did that affect how you scheduled non-conference games at all? Um, a, a little bit. We felt like this was a group we could challenge. Obviously, you know, we were asked to try to uh, strengthen our, our, not just us, but as a league, strengthen our, our non-conference schedule. Um, but my, my history as a head coach, when I feel like we've got things in order, is to play challenging preseason games, starting the year off playing against teams you're hoping to face in March. Um, and, and we're getting a lot closer to that now at Oregon State. Thank you. How are you, Keish? Good. Um, so you guys lost a ton of close games last year. And I always, I'm a total basketball nerd. How do you get your guys to understand how to execute? Are there certain drills? Do you guys watch film on executing under two minutes, one minute? Like, what are some of the things that you need to specifically address to get over the hump? And, and you know, really, it's the difference between like you're going to be in eight, nine games that are one possession. We felt like we could have been 20 and 12 yeah. easily. But uh, the big thing is, um, I think a lot of the residue was from the year before, where we were super competitive for 32 minutes the year we had all the injuries. Mm -hmm. And then we just didn't have the horses to finish. And I, and so I think a year ago, we got into a lot of situations where it was time to shut the door and our guys didn't have the confidence maybe um, to do it. And, and as much as I've had years where, boy, we every close game went our way. And the team just knew there's doesn't matter. We're not going to lose. But the flip side's true. You can learn how to lose. And it's simple. It, it is things you can watch and film, and we're going to do that. We talked about it in, in some of our meetings, the discipline. The, you got a three-point lead. You don't need a hero play in the next defensive possession right? to stretch it to five. Be solid, contest a shot, rebound it. Time just came off. Wind them up. Now go stretch it to five, but you took a minute off the clock. And we had some young guys that were thirsty to get back to success, and it was a uh, well, now it's my turn to get a steal and a dunk and shut the door on this deal. And we've talked about that. So it's discipline, it's drills. And we always do a ton of time and score. You know, two and a half minutes left, up, up five on, the, on, on D. Or, you know, we're, we're, we're up seven. Uh, you know, it's our ball with three minutes to go. We do a ton of those. Uh, now it's just a, a, um, an issue where the guys with the maturity, the added maturity we have now, I have to put that, implement that, put it into play, and I think when you have a little bit of success early, then it really drives that home, and that's how you go to where you win every close game. Ethan, you said then you feel pretty good with him running the point. Yeah, yeah, and he's he's almost really blossomed since we told him that uh, over the summer, and uh, 
you know, Steven did such a great job playing out of position uh, for a couple of years. And it's going to help him down the road that, that he developed some of his playmaking abilities. So he's not just known as a scorer. But we feel like with Ethan's size, strength, court vision, the fact that he's vocal, I think that's important when you're talking about a point guard. You have someone that's out there that put the ball under their arms and lead and direct and in huddles. Um, and, and then it's going to free Steven up you know, to come off some of those screens and, and, and be more of a guy that really looks to score and compliment the, you know, on one side of the floor and Trace on the other. I think that's going to be a pretty good trio. Um, and then when you look at Alfred Hollins and Reichel and some of the new kids we've added, that's a pretty, pretty talented and experienced group. Does it feel like an experienced group, but also one that the depth is kind of in the inexperienced group? I say experienced, but we're going to have three sophomores that play a lot. But um, th they did play a lot as freshmen. And so I think that experience and the depth that you talked about, obviously we added Antoine Vernon and Jordan Campbell. Those are going to be some guys you know, that we get to develop over the course of the year that hopefully will add to our arsenal once we get into conference play. So that depth, the inexperience will be kind of in that's kind of what you're waiting to see is what you got off the bench in terms of seeing. Yeah, the guys it, out there. that's that's the big key, you know, on the inside too. You know, it, depth is great. Um, you know, it takes a little while to cultivate though. When when you when you look at the amount of young guys that we have. Does some of the pressure come off Ethan? The fact that, I mean, Stevie, if you need it, can bring it up. You've got some new guys who will play the point. Trace is done. I mean, you might not need him to be as as ball dominant as some point guards are. No, for sure. And and we know how much the game's changed. I mean, who's really playing with a true point guard? Uh, but we do like the leadership skills that Ethan brings. Um, and I'm not letting anything out of the bag. There's going to be times that Trace plays at the point. Um, it's, all, it's all really predicated on our opponents, their weaknesses, their strengths, and uh, you know, how we can uh, maximize ours and, and, and minimize theirs. If, uh, if G is in shape, and it sounds like he is, how does that change what you're able to do out there? Well, G, G's obviously not just our most experienced post player, but he's one of the most experienced post players in the conference. You know, it's his fourth year. I don't, I don't know how many fourth year bigs. I know I think Stanford's maybe got one and maybe, maybe Washington, but his experience. But the fact that he's really changed his body type will allow him to go from playing in two minute spurts to maybe five or six minute spurts. Um, and, and by having him out there, I think it, he, his personality is one that our young guys can learn from, and he's willing to help teach those young guys. Where, you know, sometimes you look at that, there they can there can be guys that don't have that maturity level that see it as com competition, and they don't hand down any of their knowledge. And G's a guy I think that can impart a lot of that on this young crew. And and let's listen. We've we've got some tough early games. It's going to take a while for these young bigs uh, to get some things figured out. But the nice thing is. Yeah, we, we always talk about depth being the great creator of, of discipline and character. If this guy's not getting it done, we have an option B and an option C. Um, and that's what holds them accountable every day in practice. You know, and we haven't had that luxury. Uh, so I think we're going to see the best of what our guys have to offer this year because of the numbers we have, if that makes sense. <coughs> You, you mentioned the, the other the other bigs. How much do you think you're going to be able to count on them this year? Or is that going to be like maybe January it'll click in? Or, is it, or do you have any idea? You know, I have no idea. But there's always somebody that steps up uh, maybe a little earlier than you anticipate. And, and then maybe somebody you think is going to be ready a little sooner. It takes longer. Uh, the good thing is we've got four or five options. So, um, you know, if we throw this guy out because we think he can be physical and, and maybe he's not getting it done, Let's give this guy a try. Now, that might not do a lot for the, their confidence early on if their playing time's not consistent, but that's something we won't have any problem getting them through. Obviously, really significant. But um, beyond just wins, what are you looking to improve upon this year? I mean, obviously, wins, that's what matters at the right. end of the day. But what are you looking to improve upon this year? Well, I, I think our standing in the conference, um, we want to be able to you know, climb the ladder there, finish closer to the top. And we feel like you know, we're going to be very competitive in, as far as chasing you know, a, a league title. Um, we're talking about postseason. You know. Now, this all being said, a lot depends on the health of our team moving forward. But if we can keep our team intact, 
we we feel like it's very realistic goal for us to get to the postseason. And um, I mean, also uh, a big achievement of your program has been um, academically as well. You had a lot of guys in the Pac-12 all academic, and a lot of guys that got an ABC uh, academic honors. How important is that to kind of hammer that into your players to keep it a, a major part of your program? I'm glad you brought it up because I don't think those things are talked about enough. And there's a lot of your donors and maybe some alums that 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 and former players that don't you know want to hear about that all the time. They want the wins. But we feel like to build a successful program, and I'm talking about a level of consistency so you don't have the ups and downs and the dips, I think it's, it's, it's a direct correlation with how your guys get their work done in the classroom and in the community and, and then where it ultimately carries over to the court. Our guys have really bought into it. You mentioned the, the number of guys the last few years we've had on all academic lists and, and, and with the NABC's um, recognition. Um, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to win out overall. And uh, these two guys are two figureheads that got it started. And uh, it's a very, very proud accomplishment of our group and our staff and, and our relationship with our academic people on campus. It's a big priority. Um, and it's, it's going to carry over. And I think uh, in the end, again, be, reflect the success that we're going to have on the court. There'll be a direct correlation. That's great. And I mean, speaking to two guys you pointed over there, one of them, your son, Trey. Uh, I asked him before kind of what the benefits are of having, um, you know, a coach for a dad that he – and he kind of mentioned that he sees the court a little bit differently. His IQ is a little bit higher, and he has a broader perspective. Um, so I guess on the flip side, having uh, your son on the team, how much of an advantage of that is for you? Well, it's not just the fact that he's my son, but the way the way he goes about it. Because I've, I've seen other situations where guys might just have – free reign to roam because dad's the coach. Um, we made sure that he understood that had to be earned early on. And it's very easy for me to give him more, um, I don't want to say leash or green light, but freedom because of the work he puts in and who he is and what he stands for. There's a vast difference there. It's not just because, oh, that's my kid. I'm going to go let him pat his stats. It's I know what he stands for. I know what his goals are, you know, as far as the team's concerned and anything individual. And he works his ass off for him every day of every year. And so that gives me the confidence to let him go do his thing. And I know and trust that he's going to make the right decisions for us, if that makes sense.